Now on ABC Action News, a mass shooting at a synagogue. The action local law enforcement is taking. Plus, alleged pipe bombs mailed across the U.S. New details on the man accused of doing it. And the midterms closing in and the denials and accusations candidates hope will sway voters. Live from Tampa Bay streaming news leader, this is ABC Action News, taking action for you. Good evening, everyone. I'm John Sable. And I'm Isabel Rosales. We start right off with terror in the Steel City. 11 people dead after a gunman attacked a synagogue in Pittsburgh. All signs point to this being a purposeful attack on the Jewish community. The gunman, an anti-Semite who was shot several times, but survived the gun battle with police. And six people were also injured in yet another mass shooting in America, among them four police officers. The attack took 20 minutes at the Tree of Life congregation in the Squirrel Hill neighborhood. U.S. officials called for swift and severe punishment against the man responsible for this shooting. Members of the Tree of Life Synagogue conducting a peaceful service in their place of worship were brutally murdered by a gunman targeting them simply because of their faith. And tonight we're hearing the moment police raced in trying to save lives while still not knowing where that gunman is. Patrol at the front door. We got, uh, we got to evacuate some of these hostages. Received a request for patrol at the front door, evacuating hostages. We have a spent magazine. Uh, looks like uh, uh, to a high powered AK middle hallway off the uh, one four corner. The FBI agent in charge of the investigation called this the most horrific crime scene in his 22 years in police work. The survivors now trying to put the pieces of their lives back together. We've had a tragedy here today. The work of the first responders has probably prevented it from becoming much more uh, tragedy than what it is. The scene is very bad inside. And their relationship with Gab, a social media website that the suspect would allegedly spew anti-Semitic speech. PayPal says the company explicitly allows hatred to go unfiltered. More than 24 hours after officials caught the man allegedly behind mail bombs sent to Democrats and other rivals of the president, officials are trying to figure out how this South Florida man fell through the cracks. Cesar Sayek was an amateur DJ and a pizza delivery driver who was arrested outside an auto parts store. Those close to him say he did not hide his hatred for liberals and drove in a truck with pictures of President Trump, also pictures of Democrats like Hillary Clinton and Michael Moore with targets on them. Sayok is expected to make his first court appearance on Monday facing five federal charges. Let's move on now to weather. Meteorologist Jason Adams is here with fall temperatures. We're finally starting to feel like fall and with Halloween fast approaching, Jason. Yeah, we're talking about possibly dropping into the 50s tonight and not just for areas north of Interstate 4, but basically for all of us. But we've got to wait for these clouds to clear out. They've been with us all day. Temperatures only made it into the upper 70s for highs. For most of us, we had lower 80s down south and east of I-4, but these clouds are going to be with us through the next few hours. I think after midnight, that's when they really start to break apart. And then we'll see temperatures that are already dropping, continue to drop and widespread 50s. Again, back into the forecast for you this evening. We're down to 64 in Crystal River, 70 in Tampa, Zephyr Hills, and Plant City, low 70s for Bradenton and Sarasota. This is what we've been used to waking up to in the mornings. That will not be the case for you for Sunday morning. As we look ahead to tonight, though, for the rest of the evening, again, mostly cloudy skies, temperatures into the 60s, but we'll talk about where those 50s line up as we look at your forecast ahead for Sunday and also. We don't want to see 80 degrees once again as we get into your Sunday afternoon as well. So really nice forecast ahead, and that's coming up in Florida's most accurate in just a few minutes, John. All right, Jason, we'll check back with you soon. With less than two weeks until the midterm elections, both candidates in the heated race to be Florida's next governor making stops in Pinellas and Hillsborough counties today. And as ABC Action News reporter J.J. Burton shows us tonight, Republican Senator Ron DeSantis and his Democratic opponent, Mayor Andrew Gillum, found one thing to agree on. Both candidates disagree on virtually everything, but the one thing they did agree on today, don't wait till November 6th. The polls are already open. Dozens of people are out, already taking part in early voting, while the candidates were making their rounds today. Republican Congressman Ron DeSantis <laughs> and Democratic Mayor Andrew Gillum. What's going on, South St. Pete? making important campaign stops in the Tampa Bay area today. The issues, health care, taxes, toxic algae, and education again taking a backseat as both candidates continue to take jabs at each other. 
DeSantis calling Gillum a liar because Gillum denies reports that he accepted free Hamilton tickets from an undercover agent. And Gillum bringing up DeSantis' comments that some feel were racist. This may have some impact on those voters who are still undecided, but those who've already made up their minds say nothing will sway them. He's a local man. He, his heart is here. He wants to see the best for our state, and I think he'll do a fantastic job. I think it's a blue wave, a blue NAMI. The administration that is now in power, whether it's the state or the local or the federal government level, is working only for those who are wealthy and ignoring the rest of the country. In St. Petersburg, J.J. Burton, ABC Action News. The Florida elections have many more voters in the pool than they did for the primaries. The Florida Division of Elections reports more than a quarter of a million voters registered since the primaries. Now that makes more than 13.2 million people registering for this year's election. Florida has 4.9 million Democrats, 4.6 million Republicans and three and a half million independents. So really it's truly anybody's race. Today, early voting begins in all Florida counties where it has not started yet. Already more than 2 million voters in Florida already let their voices be heard, casting votes in this year's midterms. Recent polls show Gillum and Senator Nelson with leads over their rivals, but early numbers show Republicans leading in votes by more than 60,000, not including the independent vote. Operation Medicine Cabinet, a success in Pinellas County. Now the point is for people to drop off unwanted drugs and stop them from possibly getting into the wrong hands. Law enforcement agencies across Pinellas County collected nearly 1,000 pounds of medication today at seven different locations. Drop off locations in Largo and Dunedin are open year round. Now, it may still feel more like summer for us here in the Bay Area, but that won't stop the kids of Hillsborough County from going pumpkin picking. The sheriff welcoming kids to Ybor City to pick and decorate their pumpkins for Halloween. They were even given free candy and ice cream. Doesn't that sound good? Well, they may be a little early, but with Halloween, it is a month long celebration. So ahead, a costly tweet, a billionaire's response that has America gasping. Plus, a billionaire sports owner's helicopter crashes outside of a stadium what we know right now. Losing $20 would plain out suck for most of us, but apparently a billionaire doesn't care about losing $20 million. Tesla CEO Elon Musk says a tweet that led to a $20 million fine was worth it. His August tweet said he was considering taking Tesla private. This caused the markets to go into a frenzy and allegedly hurt investors. As a result, he stepped down as chairman of the company. Still ahead this Halloween, a warning that things may not be what they seem. The details parents need to hear. And USF on upset alert in Houston and the Gators looking for the upset on Georgia and the world's largest outdoor cocktail party. Your game updates and recap next in sports. Right now, Florida's Governor Rick Scott calling for the Florida Highway Patrol officers to enhance their patrols at religious institutes across the state. This after 11 people shot and killed in a synagogue shooting in Pittsburgh. They're offering their resources and working with police departments and sheriff's offices to make that happen. The governor saying in part, quote, there's no place in America for intolerance and violence, and we will do everything in our power to protect Floridians who are peacefully gathered to worship. New tonight, a massive fire outside a soccer stadium in England after the helicopter of Leicester City's team owner crashes. The crash happened earlier after the team's game against West Ham and King Power Stadium. No word yet if the team's owner was on board and if anyone survived this crash. We are waiting to get more information to bring you that latest info tonight at 11. My right, parents be on alert with Halloween less than a week away. A major warning tonight. This may look like any other candy, but it's not. It's actually meth. The Dublin Police Department in Georgia sharing these pictures with us where they say the pieces look like sweet tarts, but they're not. This is the first time they've seen these pills, so they want parents to be extra careful of people disguising drugs as candy. And Jason, it looks like we're going to have finally a cool evening for trick or treaters yeah. coming up here. Next week. It's going to be great. And I know some cities are already doing their Halloween events tonight and also Sunday night, so it's looking pretty good. Perfect timing for it as some of the coolest air of the season moves in. And take a look outside right now. We've had the clouds all day long. Not complaining too much about the clouds, though, because that helped keep our temperatures mainly below 80 degrees from I-4 North. That does include us here in Tampa, where we topped out at 78 today. We're going to hold on 
of those clouds for a few more hours, but I think after midnight they'll shift east. We're going back to clear skies. You're waking up to all sunshine tomorrow, but you're also waking up to significantly cooler temperatures. And part of the reason why the humidity has dropped again. These are dew point temperatures. Remember when they're in the 70s, it's humid. That's what we had yesterday. Today we're into the 50s. This is also a good indicator of where your overnight low temperatures will fall. So I've got most of us, if not all of us, into the 50s this evening. The exception being those of you right on the water. 60 in Tampa, 64 St. Pete, but Lutz at 55, 58 in Palm Harbor. We're at 51 tonight in Brooksville, 50 in Hernando. There there could even be a few spots trying to inch towards the 40s as you wake up in Citrus County tomorrow morning, even down to Dade City. 50 degrees there. We're down to 61 tonight in Venice, 55 in Wachulo, Avon Park, and Lake Placid, all into the 50s. Even here in Bradenton, we could fall down to 59, Apollo Beach at 58. So a very comfortable day setting up for us tomorrow, and it all starts in the morning hours where those temperatures are going to be sitting into the upper 50s and low 60s out there. By the afternoon, only upper 70s. I've got 78 for a high temperature forecast tomorrow, but the difference from Saturday to Sunday is that the clouds that we've had all day, they're out of here tomorrow, and that's going to set up a beautiful low humidity, perfect fall day for you. But don't forget the sunscreen if you're out for a while, because even though the cooler air moves in, our UV index is not changing and you could still get sunburnt in Florida basically all year long. So tomorrow morning, mostly clear skies. Tomorrow afternoon, all sunshine. There won't be a cloud to be found tomorrow, and if there is, it'll be a very lonely cloud out there because it's not going to have a lot of friends out with it, and we're going to see these temperatures again into the upper 70s. Let's fast forward to your Monday morning. A few clouds start to move back in at that time, but I'm still calling it partly cloudy. Upper 50s, low 60s, a few degrees warmer Monday morning than we were Sunday morning, and then as we'll get the afternoon hours, notice temperatures jump back up into the 80s. While it will be warmer, the humidity stays low, but we are not talking about being way above average. Our average high temperatures are into the lower 80s, so we're going to be right back to our average to start the upcoming work week. Heads up boaters, we still have a moderate chop in the bays and coastal waterways and two to three foot seas forecast for Sunday as the winds stay on the gustier side and also swimmers at the beaches. The rip current risk continues all the way through Sunday night. So if you're not a strong swimmer and look and you're not swimming on a beach with lifeguards, just play it safe out there. Water temperatures down now to the upper 70s. As we look at Florida's most accurate seven day forecast, notice through next week there's not a lot of change as far as rain chances go. I don't have rain back in the forecast until Thursday, so the only changes we'll see is we'll start to see the numbers climbing back into the mid 80s Tuesday. And there it is, Halloween looking perfect, starting out 65 in the morning, 85 at night. Trick or treaters, your temperatures will be into the 70s, and then we'll start to watch increasing storm chances as we go to the end of the upcoming work week and into next week. Weekend. Crazy to think today's Florida Georgia game is the first world's largest outdoor cocktail party game where both teams ranked in the top 10. So finally, for the first time in a decade, this game actually means something more than just bragging rights. A win today for either school keeps its SEC title hopes alive and perhaps a trip to the college football playoff. Gotta love the world's largest outdoor cocktail party for these schools. Now they did change the name years ago to be more politically correct, but come on, students, fans, adults, we all still know what it is. We still call it that. Bulldogs jumping out to a quick lead. Jake Fromm to the end zone. Beautiful over the shoulder pass and catch to Jeremiah Holloman. 10 zip dogs. Back come the Gators. This time, Florida's offense keep going. QB keeper for Felipe Franks dives over to the paint. Dogs would eventually knock in a field goal to take a 13-7 lead at the break. Third quarter, Gators offense going. Franks not known for his crisp passing up late, but what a throw here. Bullet over the middle to Freddie Swain. 36-yard TD strike. Florida takes its first lead of the game, 14-13. But that would be the only lead of the game for the Gators. Huge third and two for Georgia on the Florida 12. Complete from the Holloman again. Bulldogs back on top. 20 to 14 early in the third. Fourth quarter now, Dogs leading 29-17, looking for the dagger, and here it is. Georgia trying to run the clock out under five to go, and DeAndre Swift busts through the line and goes house hunting. 33-yard TD run, sealing the Georgia win, and the cocktail party is over. 36-17, Dogs have now won five of the last eight matchups in this game. All right, let's head to Houston. Cougars trying to beat USF again. Undefeated season for the second straight year. We'll see. Awful start for South Florida, down 14 0. They rally back. Johnny Ford finds the red paint for this 32 yard score, and we're tied at 14. Houston would retake the lead with a touchdown, so the Bulls back down by six. Watch this run, though, by Ford. He's going to take a wide turn, and it might look like a bad idea, but he's got some blockers, and before you know it, he has a reservation for six. Second score of the game, Bulls tie the Cougs at 21, but the story of the game. Really all about the bad USF defense. They couldn't stop Houston's offense. Both teams trading touchdown after touchdown. USF couldn't get stops when they counted. 30-yard TD there for Houston. USF down seven at the half. 
An upset alert, yes, here it comes. Second half, more of the same. Bulls defense giving up more big plays. Derek King to Jeremiah Singleton. Wide open, splits two defenders and gone. 52-yard score, 43-26 Houston, and they go on to win 57-36. And for the second consecutive season, USF's undefeated season ends at the hands of the Cougars. Meanwhile, it could always be worse, right? An absolute blowout in the state capitol. Clemson doing anything it wanted to Florida State. This one got ugly quick. I'll spare you FSU fans the low lights. Tigers crushed the Knolls 59-10. It's the worst loss at Florida State ever, surpassing its 58-14 loss to Southern Miss back in 1981. Clemson's 59 points is the most allowed at Doe Campbell Stadium for the Knolls. Ouch. Bad day for the state of Florida. Gators, Knolls, and Bulls all losing today. Remember, Canes lost on Friday. Good thing UCF was on a bye week. And we're back after this final timeout. Ah, you hear that? 3, 2, 1, all AC shutting off here across Florida because check it out. Some of you waking up near the 40s tomorrow morning north of I-4. It's going to be kind of chilly for Florida standards. It's certainly what we've been used to lately. About time, which is long overdue, right? <laughs> right? Perfect for trick-or-treating. Yep. All right, thanks for watching, everyone. The news continues on ABCActionNews.com. We'll see you back here after the game.